Hi, namaste. My name is Henry Chedicaire. I'm a French Canadian hypnotherapist and my special field of interest is brainwashing and mind control by cults. I'm also a filmmaker and some years ago I made a 20-hour documentary on the life and teaching of Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi with the help of the scholar David Godman. This documentary can be found on the YouTube channel of Mr. David Godman. Many people ask me, what do you think of Papaji compared to Ramana Maharishi? Well, for me, they are really completely different. I have and never had any attraction to the videos of Papaji or in his book. Absolutely no interest in listening to his so-called disciple Eli Jackson Bear and Gangaji. Well, they put me right to sleep no interest whatsoever. My focus is Ramana Maharishi himself. For millions of people that have visited the Samadhi of Ramana Maharishi, they do believe that you can have a direct relationship with the Master and you don't need Gangaji, Moji, Papaji, you don't need any of those to have a relationship with Ramana Maharishi. If you go to his ashram, they don't sell any books by Papaji. Everyone in the ashram is serving Ramana Maharishi as if he was there. They work from morning to night serving Bhagavan Ramana Maharishi. I have been many months living around the ashram and I can tell you that the power of being around a Samadhi is tremendous. Once David Godman told me the story that he had some difficulty of publishing with the Ramana Ashram and he took his problems to the Samadhi, walked around, talked internally to Ramana Maharishi and he told me the next day all his problems were solved and he told me these exact words. You say, Henry, this Samadhi is magical. So I think because of those Neo-Advaita teachers, they are confusing the neophyte by telling people, Papaji, Ramana Maharishi, it's the same thing. It is not the same thing. I would like to read what Mariana Kaplan wrote. One of the tragedies of Papaji's teaching ministry is that he either told or inferred or allowed hundreds of individuals to believe they were fully enlightened simply because they had one or many powerful experiences these enlightened teachers then proceeded to enlighten their own student in a similar way and thus was born the Neo-Advaita or the Satsang movement in the West. Ramana Maharishi never said that this one or that one was enlightened. Never. If he did he said that after they were dead, like his own mother. But Papaji made a great mistake by saying, well, you're enlightened, you're enlightened. We've seen that Andrew Cohen took those words and created a disaster 
and you can see a documentary about his abuses. I'm going to post it under this video. And to this day, Ely Jackson Beer says on his website that Papaji confirmed that he was realized. And what did he do? He came to the West and got a business going. He was doing satsang with his wife. And for three years, he was having a secret affair with a young woman. You can't imagine his subconscious mind keeping a dark secret in his heart. But at the same time, sitting there giving darshan, talking about how wonderful that we are not the mind, that we are not the body, that we are the witness. And she was doing the same thing, sitting next to him. He knew he was lying to her. She had no idea he was lying to her. And finally, the truth came out. And it was a minor scandal, but he's back in business and he has the guts to put on his website that Papa G said that he had such realization. If you study deeply the life of Ramana Maharishi, you see that he had experienced a tremendous state of samadhi, all the awakening are not the same. All the samadhis are not the same. When Swami Chinmayananda was 13, 14 year old, he tells the story of visiting Ramana Maharishi in this dark room where Ramana was sitting on his couch with his eyes closed. And then suddenly Ramana opened his eyes and looked into the eyes of the future Swami Chinmayananda and his life was completely changed. Ramana closed his eyes again and went back in his constant state of samadhi. He was an extremely special person and when people would come to him he would not say do self-inquiry and say, I'm a devotee of Shiva, I'm chanting this mantra. I would say, go on with your practice. And they would come with some other practice and say, okay, go on with this practice, go on with this practice. Because of his great enlightenment, he could see what people needed. He didn't have one pill for everybody. I think that Papaji did some great arm and telling people that they were awakened, enlightened, and then sending them away. And these people created all kinds of cults that have hurt hundreds, thousands of people by making believe, oh, Moji is a realized soul. I'm gonna kiss his feet or some years ago, I went to Gangaji's satsang and they were like a cult, just practically worshiping Gangaji. And at the time, they were selling pictures of her at the satsang. Fortunately, now they seem that nobody is selling the pictures of Gangaji on her website and uh, for sure, they are not selling pictures of the feet of Gangaji or Eli. Anyway, I'm saying this for humor's sake. Eli's a Jewish guy from New York, pretty good in business. He would know that selling pictures of his feet on the internet would not be a very good business, but maybe selling the feet of uh, Gangaji might be okay because she had such compassion to take him back after three years of lies and deceits. It's very important to me that people do not mix the two things, Papaji and Ramana Maharishi on the website of Gangaji. She says the lineage is 
mm-hmm. Papaji, Ramana Maharishi. There is no such lineage. It's complete lie. They call Papaji the disciple of Ramana Maharishi. Ramana Maharishi never said to Papaji, you're my disciple. He met thousands of people when he was alive. And this Papaji, as far as I'm concerned, is a pretty crazy guy. When he came to see Ramana Maharishi, he said, oh, I was all day going around Arunachala playing with Krishna. Krishna appear, Krishna disappear. We are having so much fun together. And Ramana Maharishi says, where is your Krishna now? Well, he's not here. So Ramana told him, well, a God that appear and disappear is not God. And if you look into the life of Papaji, he was in the army dress in full military during the day at one time and then at night he would dress in a sari and put makeup and think he was playing with Krishna. His family asked him not to marry this Ganga Mira. He married her, had a kid with her. He's a, he's a weird guy and personally I have no attraction to him whatsoever and even less to the people who say that they are God their enlightenment for him and it is important for people to understand that you can have a direct relationship with Ramana Maharishi and you don't need Papaji and you don't need Gangaji, Eli, Boji, Gangamira it could be an hindrance because as devotees of Ramana Maharishi that has lived for 20-30 years in the Ramana Ashram they can tell you that there's a specific Shakti in having Ramana Maharishi as your Ishta Guru as having him in your heart as a focus as a point of concentration day after day year after year and people who want to put Gangaji or Papaji or Moji as their focus of attention instead of Ramana Maharishi my experience and the experience of many devotees that I have talked to it's not the same folks it's not the same there's a Shakti a power a blessing a grace that comes from Ramana Maharishi and from Ramana Maharishi alone thank you very much